much, Senator Sinema, one for, for having this hearing. You and uh, Senator Langford are to be commended for that. There's so much going on at the border and, and so much need for oversight. Um, obviously, we've had some terrible statistics recently. We look at the month of October and we had, we're told the highest number of encounters uh, with illegal immigrants in any October in the history of our country. So we are breaking records, it seems, every month. Uh, there's clearly a crisis at the border. Um, I would ask quickly if I could, and, and perhaps uh, Ms. Sabatino, you're the right one to answer this. How many people got away? In other words, the so-called getaway number. And if you have, uh, say, 164,000 uh, people who have been apprehended or encounters, how many people do you think you're not uh, finding who are coming across the border Ill illegally? I do not have that number, sir. That is something I will have to follow up and certainly uh, get from our colleagues in the Border Patrol. We do work closely uh, with our colleagues in the Border Patrol to assist them with resources as are available and as needed. Uh, the estimate that they've given me is that they think, you know, somewhere between 15 and 20 percent on top of that. But um, I'd be interested in any data you could provide us on that. Along with that, of course, we had terrible numbers uh, this week with regard to this issue of overdoses of uh, people in the United States who are taking uh, opioids. And we look more closely at it, it turns out almost all of these opioids are connected to fentanyl in some way or another. Sometimes it might be uh, another drug, even uh, heroin or a non-opioid like cocaine, but fentanyl mixed in with it or mixed in with a, with a pill. And this fentanyl uh, is killing more and more of our American citizens. 100,000 people died of overdoses between April 2020 and April 2021, we were just told in the last uh, couple of days. That number, 100,000, has never been reached before. It's, it's a terrible record, and it indicates that so many Americans um, are succumbing to this fentanyl that's so deadly that comes in primarily across the Mexican border. For a while, it was coming mostly from China. Now we know it's coming mostly from Mexico. So I looked at those numbers, and it turns out in October, we had a 42% increase in fentanyl seizures coming in over the border. And uh, I know you are perhaps uh, more focused on, on that in some respects because it, much of this comes through the ports of entry actually. But a 42% increase in this deadliest of drugs coming in over the southern border, it seems to me we have a national emergency here. Can you give us a sense of what uh, you think the amount of drugs are that are coming in that are not being seized? If it's 42% increase in seizures, what is it overall? I would have to do math on the fly, sir, and I apologize. I'm not equipped to do that. Uh, we can certainly follow up uh, with uh, estimates. Uh, we did seize in the last fiscal year over 10,000 uh, pounds of fentanyl uh, coming across uh, at, to our ports of entry. Over 9,000 pounds was in particular at the southwest border. So I think with the investments that we're making in technology, in particular the NII deployments that we're going to be doing uh, over the next 18 to 24 months, and frankly not quick enough, uh, it's going to help us uh, certainly in that endeavor to, to tackle uh, that challenge. But we also work very closely with our partners in HSI and other federal government partners uh, because the, the, the best, uh, you know, we can do certainly is identify these networks uh, that, that are bringing this uh, to our ports of entry in deep concealments, um, you know, in, in uh, you know, either commodities or in private vehicles coming across the border. Uh, but the continued investment in resources like canine assets, um, but also our intelligence uh, units that we are building out in conjunction with our Office of uh, Intelligence in the National Capital Region to make sure that we're providing our frontline staff with the best available information uh, about these networks, how to identify uh, these threats and, uh, you know, recent, uh, you know, concealment methods. Um, but uh, would also defer to uh, my colleague with HSI as well with respect to uh, the investigative efforts uh, related to fentanyl. Well, thank you. And look, I appreciate what you're doing. We have provided more resources for technology and for people, and we should. And it sounds like in the next couple of years, we'll have better technology. We saw some of this on the border earlier this year when some was toured. And, um, you know, the technology is good, but the one thing I would emphasize is that by allowing more of these drugs to come in across our southern border, more drugs are getting on the streets in our communities at a lower price. In other words, uh, the increased supply is decreasing the price and making it easier for people to be able to afford these deadly, deadly drugs. So I am, for one, someone who believes strongly in 
dealing with the demand side of this, better prevention efforts, more treatment. We were making progress in that uh, longer term recovery. We were making progress there. Uh, but un unfortunately, in the last year and a half, we have seen this huge increase. And uh, I think some of it is attributable to the fact that the volume is so high now and the price is so uh, relatively uh, depressed because of that, uh, that it's creating more, more of a problem. Mr. Donimo, do you have an answer to this question about if we have a 42% increase, if we're uh, finding 9,000 pounds of this stuff, which by the way is enough to kill every man, woman, child in my home state of Ohio, uh, it's an enormous amount of fentanyl, 9,000 pounds. Uh, but do you, Mr. Uh, Geronimo, have a sense as to what we're missing? In other words, how much of these uh, uh, deadly substances are coming in across our border and not being detected? Sir, I don't have the answer to that particular question, but I will tell you HSI's efforts along with our partners. Last year alone, HSI seized over 40,000 pounds of fentanyl opiates uh, to address this issue. It starts internationally, uh, and we do have a, a vast uh, presence overseas, 86 offices in 55 countries, but more importantly, we have our partnerships with our, our foreign counterparts through our transnational criminal, uh, criminal investigative units, or TCIUs, their vetted units. And that allows us to operationalize information as they come in. I had mentioned earlier to San Senator Langford that uh, in the last 18 months, uh, HSI, in partnership with CBP and DEA, we seized over 500 kilograms of precursor chemicals coming into Mexico uh, to be used by uh, TCOs. That's one million pounds of precursors. Mr. Geronimo, were those precursors coming from China? In most cases, yes, sir. And do you have an office in China? We do have an attache there, sir. Do you have an office there? Yes, you we have an the office you Yes, have. sir. We do have an attache there. Um, so, uh, again, one million pounds of precursors. Uh, the other efforts that we made domestically, and I mentioned this earlier, uh, was in expanding our bests into the uh, mail facilities, international mail facilities, as well as uh, the airports and into what I would consider interior states like the state of Ohio. Uh, our bests, or border security task force, have been traditionally along the southwest border, but we've expanded that uh, uh, at the inception of the opiate crisis, uh, and, as well as uh, focusing on uh, the mechanisms for producing these pill presses. We have an operation called Die Another Day, which again is in partnership with CBP, DEA, and the U.S. Postal Service, where we're focused on pre, um, the importation of pill presses that are be used, used for illicit substances in the production. Um, any additional? Well, look, I, my, my time is, uh, is expiring here. And, and again, I thank you for what your officers are doing on the ground and in foreign countries. I will just make the obvious point you said that there are uh, all sorts of precursors coming from China into Mexico. So China is still very involved in this, even though there's less coming directly from China. Thanks, I think, in, in, in large measure to the STOP Act, which uh, this subcommittee and committee passed. But I think we need to make the point that this poison is coming in in record numbers, despite all of your good efforts. So what do we need to do differently to be able to address this issue, both on the supply side and the demand side? And again, uh, I, I thank you for what you're doing. You. Uh, by finding 9,000 pounds uh, are saving lives. There's no question about it, but we need to do better. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Portman. Um, I'd like to return back to Senator